Ansel Keys, Wikipedia article audio. Ansel Benjamin Keys was an American physiologist who studied the influence of diet on health. In particular, he hypothesized that dietary saturated fat causes cardiovascular heart disease and should be avoided. Keyes studied starvation in men and published The Biology of Human Starvation, which remains the only source of its kind. He examined the epidemiology of cardiovascular disease and was responsible for two famous diets, K-rations, formulated as balanced meals for combat soldiers in World War II, and the Mediterranean diet, which he popularized with his wife Margaret. Science, diet, and health were central themes in his professional and private lives. Early Life Higher Education Ansel Keys was born in Colorado Springs in 1904 to Benjamin Pius Keys and Carolyn Emma Cheney, the sister of Lon Cheney. In 1906 they moved to San Francisco before the 1906 San Francisco earthquake struck. Shortly after the disaster, his family relocated to Berkeley where he grew up. His intellect was well known ever since a young age. Louis Terman, a noted psychologist and inventor of the Stanford Binet IQ test, identified Keyes as intellectually gifted. During his youth, he left high school to pursue odd jobs, such as shoveling bat guano in Arizona, working as a powder monkey in a Colorado mine, working in a lumber camp, and working as a crew member on a ship to China. He eventually finished his secondary education and was admitted to the University of California at Berkeley in 1922. At the University of California, Berkeley, Keyes initially studied chemistry, but was dissatisfied and took some time off to work as an oiler aboard the SS. President Wilson, which traveled to China. He then returned to Berkeley, switched majors, and graduated with a BA in Economics and Political Science and MS in Zoology. For a brief time, he took up a job as a management trainee at Woolworths, but returned to his studies at Scripps Institution of Oceanography in La Jolla on a fellowship. In 1930 he received his Ph.D. in Oceanography and Biology from UC Berkeley. He was then awarded a National Research Council Fellowship that took him to Copenhagen, Denmark to study under August Crow at the Zoophysiological Laboratory for two years. During his studies with Crow, he studied fish physiology and contributed numerous papers on the subject. Once his fellowship ended, he went to Cambridge but took some time off to teach at Harvard University, after which he returned to Cambridge and earned a second PhD in physiology. While doing fish research at Scripps, Keyes would use regressions to determine the weight of fish from their length, a pioneering use of biostatistics at the time. Once in Copenhagen, he would continue to study fish physiology and develop techniques for gill perfusion that provided evidence that fish regulated their sodium by controlling chloride excretion through their gills. He would also use this perfusion method to study the effects of adrenaline and vasopressin on gill fluid flow and osmotic regulation in fishes. He also designed an improved cajal dal apparatus which improved upon Crow's earlier design and allowed for more rapid determination of nitrogen content in biological samples. This would prove useful for activities as diverse as determining the protein content in grasshopper eggs and anemia in humans. While at Harvard's fatigue laboratory, he was inspired by his Cambridge mentor John Barcroft's ascent to the top of Tenerife's highest peak and his subsequent reports. Keyes wrote up a proposal for an expedition to the Andes suggesting the study could have practical value for Chilean miners that worked at high altitudes. He was given the go-ahead and, in 1935, 
assembled a team to study the effects of high altitude on the body, such as how it affects blood pressure. He spent a couple of months at 9,500 feet and then five weeks at altitudes of 15,000 to 20,000 feet. He noted that there was no good way of predicting how well humans might adapt to high altitude, even if they adapted well to medium altitudes, which would be a problem for potential pilots in a time before pressure control. It was from these studies that he outlined the phenomenon of human physiological adaptation to environmental changes as a predictable event, a novel idea in a time when such things as blood pressure and resting heart rate were considered immutable. In 1936 Keyes was offered a position at the Mayo Foundation in Rochester, where he would continue to carry out his studies in physiology. He left after a year citing an intellectually stifling environment where research was secondary to clinical doc business and playing bridge. In 1937 he left the Mayo Foundation for the University of Minnesota to teach physiology, he founded the Laboratory of Physiological Hygiene there. His earlier research on human physiology eventually led to an assignment with the Army Quartermaster Corps where they worked to develop a more portable and non-perishable ration that would provide enough calories to sustain soldiers in the field for up to two weeks. This development did not begin without some turbulence. His colleague, Dr. Ellsworth Buskirk, notes. Professional When it appeared that the U.S. would be in World War II, Keyes went to the Quartermaster Food and Container Institute in Chicago to inquire about emergency rations. The story goes that he was told to go home and leave such things to the professionals. Undiswatted, he went to William Wrigley's office and secured $10,000 for the development of an emergency ration. Then, he went to the Cracker Jack Company. They couldn't supply money but did provide the watertight small box concept. The result was the K-ration in sealed Cracker Jack boxes. Once the basic design had been completed, the Navy, through the National Research Council, funded the testing of the K-rations on its soldiers to determine its feasibility as a temporary and mobile food source. The initial ingredients of the K-ration were procured at a local Minneapolis grocery store hard biscuits, dry sausage, hard candy, and chocolate. The final product was different from Key's original ingredients, but most of Key's initial suggestions made it to the final product. The rations weighed only 28 ounces, but provided 3,200 calories per day. Though a few sources claim the name was unrelated to Keyes, many historical references support the claim that the K-Ration was indeed named after him. The K-Ration became such a success that it was often used for more than temporary sustenance, becoming a major staple of military nutrition. Early Physiology Studies During World War II, Keyes produced various studies related to human physical performance that were of interest to the military, such as studying the effects of testosterone on muscle work and vitamin supplementation as a performance enhancer on adequately fed soldiers, among many other similar studies. It was during the war that Keyes and fellow researchers recognized the importance of knowing how to properly treat widespread starvation since simple overfeeding for so many would be imprecise and there was a potential that the refeeding would fail. To gain insight into the physiology of starvation, in 1944 Keyes carried out a starvation study with 36 conscientious objectors as test subjects in the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. At the time, conscientious objectors were being placed in virtual concentration camps, with a few functioning like the civilian public service, so that recruiting them would prove easier than seeking out volunteers in the general population. 
the original pool of 400 responders was reduced to 36 selectees, of whom 32 would go on to complete the study. The main focus of the study was threefold, set a metabolic baseline for three months, study the physical and mental effects of starvation on the volunteers for six months, and then study the physical and mental effects of different refeeding protocols on them for three months. The participants would first be placed on the three-month baseline diet of 3,200 calories after which their calories were reduced to 1,800 calories slash day while expending 3,000 calories in activities such as walking. The final three months were a refeeding period where the volunteers were divided into four groups, each receiving a different caloric intake. The war came to an end before the final results of the study could be published, but Keyes sent his findings to various international relief agencies throughout Europe and, by 1950, he completed publication of his two-volume 1385-page Biology of Human Starvation. Development of K-Rations His interest in diet and cardiovascular disease was prompted, in part, by seemingly counterintuitive data, American business executives, presumably among the best fed persons, had high rates of heart disease, while in post war Europe CVD rates had decreased sharply in the wake of reduced food supplies. Keyes postulated a correlation between cholesterol levels and CVD and initiated a study of Minnesota businessmen. At a 1955 expert meeting at the World Health Organization in Geneva, Keyes presented his diet lipid heart disease hypothesis with his usual confidence and bluntness. Naples was the first case study that seemed to support his hypothesis. Starvation Study After observing in southern Italy the highest concentration of centenarians in the world, Keyes hypothesized that a Mediterranean-style diet low in animal fat protected against heart disease and that a diet high in animal fats led to heart disease. The results of what later became known as the Seven Countries study appeared to show that serum cholesterol was strongly related to coronary heart disease mortality both at the population and at the individual level. As a result, in 1956 representatives of the American Heart Association appeared on television to inform people that a diet which included large amounts of butter, lard, eggs, and beef would lead to coronary heart disease. This resulted in the American government recommending that people adopt a low-fat diet in order to prevent heart disease. Seven Countries Study Keyes had concluded that saturated fats as found in milk and meat have adverse effects, while unsaturated fats found in vegetable oils had beneficial effects. This message was obscured for a 20-year period starting around 1985, when all dietary fats were considered unhealthy. This was driven largely by the hypothesis that all dietary fats cause obesity and cancer. A 2015 systematic review and meta-analysis by the Cochrane Collaboration, an organization which promotes evidence-based medicine, found that reducing saturated fat intake reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease, concluding, lifestyle advice to all those at risk of cardiovascular disease and to lower risk population groups should continue to include permanent reduction of dietary saturated fat and partial replacement by unsaturated fats. A 2013 systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized control trials by Cochrane found only weak evidence that the Mediterranean diet reduced cardiovascular risk factors. Keyes Equation The Keyes Equation predicts the effect of saturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids in the diet on serum cholesterol levels. Keyes found that saturated fats increase total and LDL cholesterol twice as much as polyunsaturated fats lower them. 
In 1972, Pure, White and Deadly was published, written by John Yudkin for a lay readership. Its intention was to summarize the evidence that the overconsumption of sugar was leading to a greatly increased incidence of coronary thrombosis, and that in addition it was certainly involved in dental caries, probably involved in obesity, diabetes, and liver disease, and possibly involved in gout, dyspepsia, and some cancers. Yudkin ended the first chapter, I hope that when you have read this book I shall have convinced you that sugar is really dangerous. This message was extremely unwelcome to the sugar industry and manufacturers of processed foods and these firms employed a number of methods to impede Yudkin's work. The final chapter of Pure, White and Deadly lists several examples of attempts to interfere with the funding of his research and to prevent its publication. It also refers to the rancorous language and personal smears used by Ansel Keys to dismiss the evidence that sugar was the true culprit. Keys wrote, for example, It is clear that Yudkin has no theoretical basis or experimental evidence to support his claim for a major influence of dietary sucrose in the etiology of CHD. His claim that men who have CHD are excessive sugar eaters is nowhere confirmed but is disproved by many studies superior in methodology and slash or magnitude to his own, and his evidence from population statistics and time trends will not bear up under the most elementary critical examination. But the propaganda keeps on reverberating. Unfortunately, Yudkin's views appeal to some commercial interests with the result that this discredited propaganda is periodically rebroadcast to the general public of many countries. The Sugar Controversy The efforts to discredit the case against sugar were largely successful, and by the time of Yudkin's death in 1995 his warnings were, for the most part, no longer being taken seriously. BMI and Other Contributions Yudkin's arguments and evidence for the dangers of sugar were the focus of several articles in the British Medical Journal of January 19, 2013. In 2009, Robert Lustisch, a pediatric endocrinologist of the University of California, San Francisco, medical school who has a special interest in childhood obesity, made a video called Sugar, The Bitter Truth. Lustisch had independently rediscovered and confirmed Yudkin's findings and, taking aim at keys, asked his audience, am I debunking? In a 1972 article, Keyes and his co-authors promoted Adolf Quetelet's body mass index as the best of various indices of obesity, which the U.S. National Institutes of Health then popularized in 1985. Keyes was always considered an interventionist. He generally shunned food fads and vigorously promoted the benefits of the reasonably low-fat diets he contrasted with the North American habit for making the stomach the garbage disposal unit for a long list of harmful foods. Because of his influence in dietary science, Keyes was featured on the cover of the January 13, 1961 issue of Time magazine. Personal Life Keyes was an atheist. When Keyes was hired at the Mayo Foundation in 1936, he hired Margaret Haney as a medical technologist. In 1939 they married and had three children, Carrie Dandria, Henry Keyes, and Martha McLean. Carrie became a clinical psychologist and Henry became a physician and cancer researcher. Both are well-respected contributors to their fields. Martha was shot dead by a thief in 1991 when she was 42. Together, Margaret and Keyes Co. authored three books, two of them bestsellers, Eat Well and Stay Well, The Benevolent Bean, and How to Eat Well and Stay Well the Mediterranean Way. 
They earned enough royalties to build Minelia, their villa 100 miles south of Naples. They also traveled the world, going to places like Japan and South Africa to record data for Ansel's published works such as the Seven Countries Study. Keyes also appeared on To Tell the Truth game show as the inventor of K-rations, fooling two of the four panelists. Keyes died on November 20, 2004, two months before his 101st birthday. A year earlier, he had left Piapi, his beloved village in the Salento region located on the southwest coast of Italy, where he had spent 28 years of his life. This article incorporates public domain material from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention document Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report.